out of nowhere elon found himself on a site and his site manager was shouting at him what sizing have you done and all the cable tray are small bang he realized that he is not in a right state of mind and no one else would like to be in this situation right fortunately for elon he was daydreaming and he realized he needs to get serious about work so he went to his mentor who told him that cable tray is very easy if you follow these five steps of sizing it so let's get into it the step number 1 is imagine this is your cable tray the first thing is to know the type of the cables which will be entering the cable tray for example analog input digital input cables etc and their outer diameter so we'll have to find out first the od with respect to the catalogs or very easily it can be found out once this is done we should also note another thing with respect to instrument cable tray sizing and electrical cable tray sizing they have some spacing which needs to be kept because they're cables carry very high current for us this is not applicable now let's go to the second step which is finalizing the spare capacity so even if how much good cable tray you have you might have been some calculations might have got missed or it is for future expansion you need to keep certain place empty so this is usually called a spare capacity which is usually 20% or 30% depending on whether it's a feed or it's detail engineering project and what is the client requirement third step in getting to this is finalizing the tier and the layer criteria what does this mean this means is for example you have a cable tray and you have our cables placed here which is in layer 1 now there could be another layer on top of it which is also called as tier or layer stacking this could be layer 2 so we need to know how many layers is the client wanting and also is the cable tray width sufficient enough to accommodate this finally is the cable segregation criteria what does this mean is imagine this is your cable tray and you have these cables as ai ao di cables sometimes if this red cable for example is a power cable carrying high current you might not want it to interfere with your analog input or analog output cables right so you either have a separate tray or you put something called as a collar in between so that the interferences don't take place between them this will also accommodate some space and also it would make you understand that when, do i need to run one cable tray or multiple cable trays so this should be very much known finally it is to know that what is the nearest standard size so if your final calculation from calculating from step 1 to 4 was 127 mm you might have to go for 150 mm for example if it's 266 you might go for 300 mm 600 mm so whatever is the nearest standard size but let's see is elon understood this thing elon are you clear with this Ah it seems he needs an equation to get it done can you help him out with the equation let's get into it so here's your cable tray so let's imagine that the od of blue cable is x mm od of yellow cable is y mm and now we'll calculate 2 into x which is two blue cables right so 2x plus one yellow cable so one y plus we'll now add the spare capacity so let the spare capacity be z mm so it's z upon now you need to know the number of layers so let's imagine there was only one layer of cable so it's upon one had it been two or three layers you would have it either two or three depending on the number of cables and the layers on it now i would love to share something that i've written already two free ebooks on pip standards and diaphragm seals and i'm planning to write ebooks on control valves and relief valves so please stay updated so i'll try my best to release as quickly as i can please subscribe so that we'll stick together each saturday learn something new and i'll share as soon as these ebooks are completed thank you and have a great day ahead